Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights in the Teens. This is episode 172. What does woke, what does it, I totally blew it. What does it mean to be woke? Clearly I'm not woke. I can't even read the script. We'll just cut it out in post. (laughs) We'll fix it in post. (laughs) I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my responsible and aware co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. See, at least I got your name right. That's something, right? Yeah, you know, sometimes that's all you really need. Sometimes that's the most you can hope for. Yeah. So how you doing this week? Um, all right. You know, been chilling ever since I've been off of school. Yes, you have. Enjoying your time off. Yep, definitely. That's what the summer's for. Relax, recharge, and get ready to go back. Yep. So this is the next what we like to call controversial topic in this series of nine hard-hitting topics. I guess as hard-hitting as we get here on Insights into Teens. Yeah. Um, So, woke, it's one of the most divisive and misused terms in society today. A term that's being used to define political philosophies, stifle the education of certain topics, and explain away business philosophies and put down people you would disagree with. On today's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to talk about what woke is, what it really means, and why it's so misused as a word. But before we get into that, I do want to just offer a real quick public service announcement and suggest that you, if you don't already do so, subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, And audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things, anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would also encourage you to write in, give us your feedback. Uh, This series of episodes is a great example to to call in and tell us how wrong we are or how right we are and exchange some ideas with us. We would definitely uh, welcome that. Yep. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. Or you can find links to all of our social media on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So you did most of the research on this one here. And the first source that we used was the Atlantic.com. And it's an excerpt from a letter to the Atlantic from a concerned parent. And they say, I write as a concerned parent of a fifth grader at a private school that appears to prioritize, quote, social justice over academic excellence. The school has brought in a consultant And now the kids are reading all this new woke literature and at the expense of the classics we all grew up on, like To Kill a Mockingbird and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Most of the teachers and parents I talk with just want school to be school, not some kind of Maoist social re-education. Who's this all for? Another one says I'm a a left-wing New York Democrat. I believe strongly in equal rights for all people, and I think we've still got a ways to go when it comes to equality. But I don't want school to make my son feel bad just because he's white. It's not like he owns slaves. His great-great-great-grandparents were starving in Ireland during the time of slavery. I 
I think these two letters from really two very different camps kind of illustrate what the problem in society is today. It's that you have to be one extreme or the other. There's no moderation. You know, you, you either jump in with both feet and you charge headlong into these things without really thinking them through because these really aren't the most intelligent statements that adults could be making about these topics. Yeah. So I think that's kind of sort of where we're going with the podcast today, to highlight where some of these problems really are. What the, what, what's our next source tell us? Uh, so pardon my pronunciation of this. Um, our next source comes from... Me- Can you help me with that? Mercado Met? MercadoNet.com. And basically, this is an excerpt of an individual's blog that's titled, quote, Wokeness is stalking your kids, and here's how to protect them. In recent weeks, the following incidents took place, all involving people I know and personal and know personally who live near me. A middle school teacher was unable to focus at school where a female student who identifies as a boy, identifying as a dog, kept barking in class. The teacher refused to say anything about it. A girl refused to use the school washroom all day because she didn't want to use the gender-neutral washroom with boys. Using the girl's only washroom, which is out of the way, would single her out among her peers. A mother was baffled when her teen started spouting words like colonialism and patriarchy while dressing down her father for not clearing his plate from the table. A grad year student looking into post-secondary options found the first required course for the local college's fine arts program is, quote, Intro to Critical and Cultural Theory, a Marxist. A Marxist-based philosophy that subtly encourages aggression and division. An elementary student borrowed a library graphic novel of Little Women in which Joe comes out as a lesbian and shares a kiss with another girl. A Catholic high school teacher asked students to introduce themselves using their preferred pronouns. Now, let me take a second to kind of comment on a couple of these things here. Some of these are kind of the extreme of... I don't even want to say it's woke. It's it's really just idiocy, right? So, yeah. so if you got a if you got someone who's a, who's identifying as a dog, okay, that's just a cry for attention there. Yeah, and I actually have an instance kind of with this. Uh, my math teacher ended up mentioning something about this with some of the other students in my class, and I ended up overhearing it. And she was talking about like I have no problem with kids who. Uh, want to identify as different genders, but I cross the line when you want to identify as an animal. Yeah, I mean, you're, that's really someone that's, that's, if you stop to think about it and you talk about it with them and you see what they're doing, chances are they're probably mocking the entire situation there. Yeah. And if they're not, that really is a cry for help and they probably need some assistance. Yeah. Because if they're identifying as a different you know, uh, animal race, they're probably trying, traumatized, and, and they're probably hiding from something. Yeah. It's not some kind of political thing. And, and the problem I think we run into is all of this becomes political because everything today becomes political. Yeah. And there's legitimate motivation behind a lot of these things that has nothing to do with politics. Yeah. And that's sort of lost in a lot of what we're talking about here today. So a couple of examples of wokeism are also taking place in the workforce. A new employee taking diversity and inclusivity training was required to answer yes to the question, does refusing to use a person's preferred pronouns constitute harassment? A hairdresser had two customers an hour apart tell her how they, quote, can't say anything in the face of woke ideology such as these scenarios. They feel as if their opinions are being nullified. And 
again, this is one of those things where it really is, it's not one side or the other. People who, who take anything to an extreme are really distorting the entire matter for their own purposes. Yeah. You know, we just did our, our episode on Pride Month uh, last week, and we had talked about some of the complaints that people had from the, the right side, where they, they don't think that kids should be going to drag shows that are sexually charged. And I don't think that's unreasonable. But at, in the same breath, they don't want kids going to drag time, drag queen story time. Which the one that I attended had nothing to do with anything that would have been inappropriate to kids. So the generalization that people tend to have when they come up with these specific examples where they want to pick out that 1% of the things that do happen and ignore the other 99% is just another form of extremism where you're distorting the facts to suit your own agenda. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times these anti-woke people say, well, I don't want you indoctrinating my kids. Well, what do you think you're doing when you're distorting the facts of things and when you're trying to hide historical facts and when you're trying to ban books that you don't agree with? That's just another form of indoctrination. You don't want people to indoctrinate your kids as long as it's indoctrinating your own philosophy and them was really what they should be saying. Yeah. And, and that's just hypocrisy. Yeah, and, like, I'm not going to ignore the fact that, like, like, there's really extreme parts on both sides, like you mentioned. Like, yes, they're, like, identifying as a dog is just weird and is something that no one should really be accepting because you can't, like, that's not something that can really happen. And at the same token, that can also normally not really be seen as a political statement and normally shouldn't be seen as a political statement. And, yeah, some of, like, the fears can be somewhat founded, but, again, it's normally a very small minority that just seems to sound louder because, like, it's seen as being, like, really bad or whatever. Yeah, and the, the problem that you have is when you take things out of context, like, if you take a quote out of context and you twist it to try to make your own point you can look like you're making your own point and try to support your own point of view. But because you're taking it out of context, it's really just a lie. And do, does that, is that how we want to indoctrinate our kids to teach them to lie in order to get what they want? Yeah. You either have morals or you don't, and you can't pick and choose. You either play by the rules or you don't. And the people that want to distort the rules and change the rules to win the game are no better than the people that they're coming out against. And I think really cooler minds need to prevail here and, and you have to have reasonable people get together and, and discuss these things. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about empowering our youth and we'll talk about what the word woke actually means, what the dictionary definition is and how far off it's and distorted it's it's being made in the popular mainstream media we'll be right back for over seven years the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today 
at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about what does it mean to be woke. And now we're going to talk about empowering our youth. And this information uh, comes to us from the source of dailyutahchronicle.com. So thanks to technological and social changes, today's younger generation has the ability to use their voices for change more so than any generation before. Some parents are concerned about how involved their children have become in social issues, especially when their children's opinions begin to differ from their own. Today's parents need to take caution when trying to tell the young minds of today to stay quiet about the things happening in the world they are destined to inherit. Any discussion between parents and their teenagers should be done respectfully. That respect should stay should be a two-way exchange. Parents don't need to be afraid of their children being woke, or sh- nor should they constrain a teen's ability to speak up. Empowerment is something all parents should seek for their children. So what does woke mean? It's not working. <laughs> I, I, I prepared this and it's not working. <laughs> Hang on. Because I had the wrong one. So, okay, we'll skip that and we'll come, back. <laughs> we'll come back to that. So what does woke mean? According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of woke, <clears throat> woke is to be, quote, aware of and actively attentive to important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. It's a term coined by minority communities to express awareness of different issues. A lack of understanding of the term and of today's youth leads some to see the word as an example of teen slang, while others view it as a way to belittle those with differing political views. In reality, the term is an expression of neither of these negative views. Those that believe that it's those that believe it, it is a failure to understand its significance. So despite being misused and often misunderstood, the term woke provides a common space to talk about issues on social media and in our communities. Wokeness shouldn't be dismissed as simply a phase of growing up or an act of rebellion. Political awareness and activism is beneficial to not only the participant, but also the communities and issues they're involved with. Political awareness does not mean political correctness. There is room for differing points of views and opinions. Being woke means an openness to other ideas, a sense of compassion to the plight of others, and a desire to understand an issue from more than just your own perspective. For today's youth, wokeness is about taking a stand for what is right and navigating an an ever-evolving, sometimes scary world. Parents and leaders of today need to approach wokeness with an open mind and understand that it isn't just obnoxious slang. Parents shouldn't feel worried, but rather feel proud that their children are using their voices for good. They should not dismiss the value of political discussion because of a fear of disagreement or arguments. Parents must develop a connection and trust with their children so these important discussions can take place. If they don't take place now, when the parents have a chance to help guide their children, then it'll help it happen elsewhere, under different circumstances, in a way that parents aren't part of. The parents of a woke teen need to truly see their children for who they are and understand that it's okay if they think differently. Simply put, A parent with a woke teen holds the ability to cultivate and embrace their teen's unique perspective. So you hear politicians throw woke around all the time now. Here's an example of what we're talking about. Woke ideology. Woke in the legislature. The woke in the schools. The woke in the corporations. The woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. 
So obviously we had a little bit of fun with that one. But the truth is, the way that it's being used in those examples and in society in general is wrong. Yeah, and one of the things that I found interesting when it came to my research on this was that woke was actually something that's existed for far longer than, you know, the public has actually been using it. Uh, before Black Lives Matter, before really 2020 as a whole, it was something that was coined, like, in the past uh, by, uh, you know, the colored community uh, as a sense to bring up awareness to the racial injustices of the time. Um, and I found it interesting because it was used to mainly refer to uh, people being aware of the racial injustices and wanting to actively take part in trying to change them. And then eventually it ended up culminating into relating to other social justices, such as the LGBTQ plus community and gender equality. And the thing is... The way that politicians tend to use this today is really one to promote fear. You know, if you're afraid of something and they can come in with a solution that they can fix that problem, take that fear away, that's manipulation. Hitler did the same thing, you know. And politicians in this country have a history of using conflict and war to boost themselves. You know, Reagan had all his little wars in, in Central America and, and South America. You had both George W. and George H.W. Bush had their own wars to, to increase their popularity. You had uh, Donald Trump try to incite race wars with his, you know, fanboy image of all these white supremacy groups. Now you've got someone like a Ron DeSantis who's trying to promote a cultural war because everybody that can rally around some kind of cause, some kind of anger, some kind of hatred can be manipulated and can be controlled. And that's what populate, what po politicians are trying to do here. And we're smarter than that as a society. And we're better than that as a society. We shouldn't let people manipulate us like that. Yeah. You know, you have, you know, I, I'm going to keep bashing Ron DeSantis here because he's the king of woke right now. His, his entire campaign is about being anti-woke. But at the same time, what else is he doing? He's banning books in schools. He's passing legislation that's anti-LGBTQ. He's passing legislation to dictate what higher education, what the college systems can do and what they can teach. He's doing everything he can to control the minds of the people of Florida. Because the one thing that every politician, regardless of party, the one thing every politician is terrified of is an intelligent voter, an informed voter. Mm -hmm. If they can corner the market on what quote-unquote truth is, then they can control the voting population. Yeah. And I don't want to turn this into a political debate, but the way that they're taking what really is a positive thing, being woke, you know, we'll go back to the definition here. You know, woke is to be aware and actively attentive to important facts. Why wouldn't you want your kids to be aware of important facts and important issues? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want your kids to be aware of racially charged issues and social justice. Yeah, and that's the one thing that I found. A lot of people have been, like, not only have politicians been using it, you know, as a sense of, as to bring a sense of fear to their voters, but it's also commonly used as an insult against people. Yeah. Which I definitely find strange. It's like anytime somebody, like, calls another person woke, like, I just think of that definition and I'm like, well, that's not really a bad thing. That's like insulting you for being intelligent. You should be dumb like me. Like, it makes no sense. And it follows the philosophy he has of banning books and, and dictating what can be taught in schools. It's all about control and controlling that knowledge. And you not being woke means that you're ignorant of things, means that you don't know things, means that your eyes aren't open. You're not in care... Like, I would encourage you. 
I'm not telling you to take my opinion or anybody else's opinion. Go do your own research. Go use different sources to do your research on. Don't just look at one news site. When I, you know, peruse my news, I look at probably four or five different news sources, many of which conflict with each other. Because while a lot of what they tell you in the media, a lot of what the politicians tell you is, is really self-serving, fake news is real, right? So you've got a lot of media sources out there. Their job is to get ratings, to sell advertising or to sell newspapers or whatever it is. Their job isn't to bring the truth. So the level of journalistic integrity that used to be part of the news has rapidly decreased. But the information is out there. And you can do the research. Any, anyone who's listening or watching the podcast, do your own research. Don't listen to what someone else tells you. I would even say question what your teachers tell you. Because teachers can be wrong too. We're human beings. Everybody can be wrong. You know how many times you brought home homework that had errors on it, that had factual information that was wrong? And every time that happens, I find out who the teacher is, and I email it into the teacher and ask them why this is incorrect, because they're supposed to be teaching you. They're not doing it maliciously like politicians are, but people make errors, that people make mistakes. If you stop questioning these sources of knowledge and sources of authority, then you're, you're just a mindless lemming at that point in time. Just get in line and follow behind the, the, the next person who doesn't want to think. We, we have the right, we have the obligation as citizens to think for ourselves. You know, you're not voting yet. You will be in a few years. And when you vote, when anybody votes, you need to be an informed voter. Yeah, and that's why, like, the thing is, I've seen, like, people commenting on videos about saying, like, various things, I guess, that kind of align with their political alignment. And, like, I go and Google those sayings. I Google the facts that they have. And a lot of the times, they're not even saying true facts. They never provide their sources. They kind of just make up stuff to, con to you know, work with their view. And really... I just feel like people should, you know, be doing the research before they say anything, really. Or, like, try not to, like, constantly have, like, false facts put out there without actually looking at the research. Because you could be completely wrong. And a lot of times that happens. And, and part of the problem is a lot of times the sources that are out there that we rely on seem very legitimate, seem very reliable but even the news is putting information out that's incorrect that they wind up correcting afterwards you've got journalists that have their own agendas you've got newspaper publishers that have their own agendas they're not out there for your benefit they're not out there for the benefit of human society they're out there to make money and anybody who has an agenda that's different than yours potentially is trying to manipulate you. And that's just, you know, a fact of nature. So be smart enough to do the research. Don't just trust a single source. And, and be smart enough to question these people. Anybody who's that desperate and that agitated to get you upset about something and to get you agitated about something is trying to do it so that you can't think with a clear head. Be woke, be aware of things, and be intelligent about things. Yep. Now, aside from, from that, there are other things that we can do to try to help the situation along here. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about healthy activism. We'll be right back, and hopefully I won't push the wrong button this time. Hopefully not. <laughs> Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. 
our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in a Teen. Today we're talking about what does it mean to be woke. And now we're going to have a bit of a talk about healthy activism. Parents should also discuss healthy habits for their teen's political and social involvement. It can seem like involving technology continues to attack the good old days. Safety should be a priority, and teens have grown far where where of the consequences of being too open with opinions and information online political and tech savviness become even more crucial when teenagers head to college where many young adults first get involved in social activism to prepare for new social environments parents should teach their children to responsibly engage in politics young adults need to learn that they have a voice and responsibilities that come with it Parents misunderstanding woke culture leads to condensation, not the kind of condensation you can get from humidity. Yeah. Uh, and misunderstandings between parents and children. This dismissive attitude blatantly disregards many issues that young adults today face. There's no reason why young adults shouldn't use their voices. Thousands of young adults who may be wrongfully brushed off as woke are making strides to provoke change and awareness for a variety of issues. Parents can and should be a healthy part of that movement and those discussions. Adults need to understand that there's no shame in learning something new from the youth of today. Uh, and I do want to say something uh, real quick uh, on that last note. So... Um, I did this Hobie Leadership Program um, a couple weekends ago, um, and it was something that I was the only representative on my school, and it was kind of a seminar about uh, leadership. Uh, and the first uh, person that went up, t the first speaker that we ended up seeing, uh, actually ended up saying how he thinks that the youth of today are smarter than people of older generations. Uh, cause he ended up having like this, uh, he had his own experience at Hobie where he, this one speaker he, uh, who was, who he ended up watching, uh, was basically talking and complaining about his generation and like all the bad things that were happening. And basically he was one of the few people that ended up standing up to that. Uh, and, uh, he ended up realizing how much smarter the younger generation is compared to the older generation because we have access to so much more information at this point. And, you know, I definitely don't think that parents should shame kids for thinking differently because you can really learn a lot from people who are younger than you. And I agree 110%. Thinking differently is how things get better. If you don't think differently, then nothing changes, nothing evolves, no new inventions come out, no new policies change, no new laws change, and you just you go on numb through, through life. It's when you get those revolutionary thinkers who want to challenge the system and want to challenge the status quo that real change happens. And we had done a podcast a while back on complaining. And basically the, the conclusion of that, that discussion was nothing changes if you don't complain. And only people who are willing to change things and have the motivation 
the intelligence and the willingness to take on ingrained systems are the ones that are going to complain and make that complaint a productive outcome. And you can't complain if you're ignorant. Yeah. If you're not woke, right? So if you're, if you're woke, then you're in tune with what's going on. You're observant of the things around you. You're questioning the authorities. You're questioning the media. You're not believing what the politicians are trying to sell you. You're smart enough to go out, do the research, and figure out things for yourself rather than have somebody else think for you. When you're not woke, you just don't want to think for yourself. You're content to let someone like a Ron DeSantis or someone else think for you. And that's okay. Not everyone can be extraordinary. And if you want to be incredibly average and an underachiever and not do anything interesting or successful in life, that's your choice too. You can do that. In fact, the vast majority of the population are like that. But the world needs people who are extraordinary. And the only people in the world who are extraordinary are people who are woke and aware of things. It's important to keep that in mind. Yeah. So do you think, and we'll kind of finish up with an impromptu question and answer. Do you think you're woke? Um, I'd say so. Uh, if, you know, the past uh, however many minutes we've been on uh, for haven't kind of clued you into that already, I would consider myself woke, and I don't consider it an insult. I don't consider it like my political association. I really just think of it as I'm willing to make change in the world because I, I, the world is still screwed up. It, it really is. Like, there's people who are trying to revert things to the past, and the things that they're trying to revert are things that are going to harm a lot of other people. And really, we shouldn't be doing that. We need to be moving forward, not taking, like, ten steps back. Well said. What would you say to somebody who is anti-woke and is trying to drive culture into that anti-woke state like we heard from, you know, a, a candidate for U.S. president? Well, I basically want them to understand that that's not really what woke is supposed to be. A lot of people that kind of are anti-woke are really using it in the wrong way. And if you notice, a lot of, like, figures that are anti-woke or are against the idea of wokeness normally never define woke. Like, they normally... It's kind of just supposed to be an implied thing. And really, a lot of it... That kind of just means that they are allowed to shape people's ideas of what woke actually is so that you don't have to do the research on it, just take my word for it. So I'd kind of just try to let them know that, no, that's not at all what woke is. You're kind of getting it wrong. And, like, I'd provide them sources for, like, what woke actually means and why it's really not as bad as they make it out to seem. So if woke is this dirty word and there's a large segment of the population that thinks woke is this newest evil on society. But we know, obviously, from our research and, and our discussion here that, that woke is a good thing. So if the word woke triggers these people, what word would you use to describe what woke is that would be less controversial? Um, if I had to use another word to describe its definition, um, I'd kind of go along the lines of wanting to make change or something along the lines of, uh, in intuitive, okay. I suppose, or, uh, visionary, something like that. 
like along the lines of somebody that wants to see change and will make sure that change is seed through, someone who's willing to watch, who's a, who is willing to watch the world change for the better. That's kind of how I would uh, define it, I suppose. Okay, I think that works. Do you think you could make a compelling enough argument to someone like a Ron DeSantis to understand that, one, he's using the term incorrectly, and two, his philosophy is, con- is not conducive to the betterment of society? I mean, I feel like I could change the minds of somebody who is anti-woke, but I'm not sure if I could change the minds of someone like Ron Santez. Because, like, you could tell somebody something and say that it's slight, that it's, you know, actually a good thing. You can provide the sources, you can provide the definition, and some people are still going to remain ignorant. It's going to be really hard to break that shell. And one thing that I've kind of learned is that you can only push for so long as an individual. You can only really do so much for certain people. While you can change the minds of plenty of other people, there's always going to be at least somebody that will stick to their grounds and will not and aren't willing to change. Because a lot of changing this mindset is really about the individual person who should who you know should be the one to change um and a lot of people aren't really willing to do that because again being anti-woke kind of makes you seem a little ignorant to a lot of things and not at all being an insult for anybody that's anti-woke but like i could certainly change a lot of minds who are kind of on the cusp of it but to people who are so far again, so far on the line of being against it, I feel a lot of that really just comes down to them wanting to change. So what do you do with someone like that? Somebody who is unwilling or unable to change, somebody who's holding society back or potentially taking up a leadership position that could have a detrimental impact on society. What do you do with someone like that? Do you just ignore them? Do you you work to counter them? Like, obviously, we're we're talking in this case specifically about a politician. Do you work to get them out of office or do you try to cooperate with them? Do you do you try to do something to alleviate the problem because you can't eliminate it? Or do you just ignore it and hope it goes away? Well, it can certainly depend on the amount of power that somebody has. If you're talking about an actual politician that has these detrimental views that can affect millions of people who have opposite views of them, then I'd say it's probably in your best interest to be at least voting them out. I wouldn't say you're going to be able to reason with them necessarily because they, a lot of it is more or less just for them to kind of inflate their popularity and get people on their side. So you really can't do much in the way of uh, convincing them otherwise. You can certainly try, but I've kind of, I kind of am trying to grasp with the idea that it's that's not the most realistic thing to do. So really, the best you can hope for is to just vote them out of office. When it comes to somebody more personal or somebody that has less influence but still has like these harmful views. I'd say at that point you can probably try to reason with them, but even then there's going to be people who are more stuck up about it. And another thing that uh, I learned at Hobie uh, that somebody ended up mentioning uh, was that there's going to be at least 40% of, of people that aren't going to like you, and like there's nothing you can really do to change that. However, the majority of people are probably going to like you. And really, you should focus on the majority of people who agree and are ready and willing to make that change rather than, like, the few people that, like, are not at all willing to change their minds. I'm not saying to ignore them completely, but, like, definitely focus on the majority that of support that you'd have rather than the small minority of people who still won't change their minds. Okay, I think that's a pretty sound philosophy. 
So I think we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to get your closing thoughts, and then we'll finish up the business of the podcast. All righty. We'll be right back. Okay, so to everybody out there, I just, my hope for this podcast at least is that at least some people watching have change their opinions on what woke actually means, or at least understand more clearly what it actually means, and to hopefully no longer be using it in such a harmful context. I don't want to be changing anybody's uh, views entirely. I want everybody to respect everybody's views, even if they're different. I just uh, hope that this podcast at least enlightened people on a uh, seemingly political trigger word that, like, is constantly misused and at least to bring light to its true meaning and hopefully even change the minds of a few people. Okay. That was a very uh, altruistic uh, uh, justification for this podcast, and I think it, uh, it suited, suited it. Uh, that was all we had today. Before we do go, I do want to get, once again, uh, I want to invite you to subscribe to the podcast. I would also ask you to give us a, a, you know, rating. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a review on whichever podcast catcher you use. Uh, you can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video and audio of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. And we're available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, etc., etc. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us if we're totally off our rocker with what we talked about here today, or, you know, agree with us and, and tell us how you try to make a difference in the world a positive change. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, we're at Insights Into Things Podcast. On Instagram, we're at Instagram.com slash Insights Into Things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash Insights Into Things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. Or you can uh, reach out to us through our website, at www.insightsinthings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, which you guys should hopefully be having a few new podcasts going on, but we have a decent selection enough already. And Insights in Tomorrow are not entirely monthly podcasts, but we just put out a new episode of it, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Wow, your, your, your marketing is getting better. I'll give you that. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. That's it, folks. Another one of the books. Bye, everyone.